This week on Healthy Living, we take a look at the future of healthcare and the impact of AI in medicine. We'll discover a new gene therapy that could be a game changer in the treatment of sickle cell disease. And we'll see a clinical trial into immersion therapy for brain and spinal injuries. Plus, how are the computer screens affecting our vision? These stories and more in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello, I'm Linoch Moudou. Thank you for joining us on Healthy Living. From cutting edge technologies to groundbreaking medical research, digital transformation is impacting the way healthcare is provided and will likely drive the future of health. Observers say healthcare promises to be nothing short of revolutionary in the coming years. Among other things, artificial intelligence, AI, is increasingly used for diagnostics and treatment plans from early disease detection to robotic assisted surgeries. Personalized medicine using people's DNA to tailor their healthcare has also increased in recent decades, according to medical experts at the University of Utah. We start here in the United States, where regulators have approved two new gene therapies for sickle cell disease. The Food and Drug Administration says the one-time treatments can be used for patients 12 and older with severe forms of the disease. Take a look. Regulators approved two new gene therapies for sickle cell disease that doctors hope can cure the painful, inherited blood disorder that afflicts mostly black people in the United States. The Food and Drug Administration said the one-time treatment can be used for patients 12 and older with severe forms of the disease. I think this announcement of the approval of gene therapy is potentially game-changing for a number of patients. Uh, many patients lack the availability to, to do a stem cell transplant. Uh, and so for those patients, it often means a life filled with pain and with repeated hospitalizations and lots of complications. And this potentially offers a chance to alleviate those. The disease affects hemoglobin, the protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen. A genetic mutation causes the cells to become sickle or crescent-shaped, which can block blood flow, cause excruciating pain, organ damage, strokes, or other problems. I know for someone like myself who goes through red cell exchanges once every seven to eight weeks, this one-time kind of care, I think, is very, very need very much so needed. Um, it, again, for someone like me, cuts down having to go to the hospital every month into doing this treatment and then just getting regularly checked by my doctor. So I think it's something that's really needed for this sickle cell community. Current treatments include medication and blood transfusions. The only permanent solution is a bone marrow transplant, which must come from a closely matched donor without the disease and brings a risk of rejection. I think this is a giant leap forward uh, in gene therapy for treatment of chronic diseases. And so this is the first step forward. And I think in the future, we're gonna see a lot more diseases that are able to be treated with gene therapy. The Vertex treatment was recently authorized in Britain and Bahrain and is currently under review elsewhere. Dr. Remy Gius Rugakengila is a urologist at Benjamin Mpaka Hospital in Dodoma, Tanzania. He discusses how artificial intelligence will impact healthcare in the future. I can predict maybe near future, we are going to have better health because of artificial intelligence. It's not going to replace human brain rather than it's going to complement the human brain and with machines things will be easy human beings are the one who are going to command the machine we are the one we are going to calibrate the machines so i see i'm not worrying with the machines actually without those machines we had a problem there was a lot of errors actually with machines we have minimized a lot of errors and we've done a lot of work with with minimal time i can say all of the, all, all, all the people, all, all the system are benefiting because for doctors with the artificial intelligence, uh, you know, you do a lot of operation in the minimal time and at the, at the same time, you don't get tired. And also patients, other than staying in the hospital for two or three days with the artificial intelligence, you can just capture a disease, early diagnosis, and you can treat you. So you can imagine, it's a chain. Eh? All people are benefiting. Even the government is benefiting. I can tell you, with artificial intelligence, 
with our good high-tech machines, we can help all the people global. What we need is the goodwill of the government and the goodwill of the those people who are producing. For example, if using the WhatsApp or using high-tech machine, you can just even give directive when you are in another country to the terminal area if they have a good access of the internet, you know, they have a phone. You can give directive and you can reach them. Uh, for another thing, if you a person needs blood, for example, you can use a, a drone to deliver blood to that area. You have seen that in recently, I think it's, it's China, whereby they were doing robotic surgery in a distance. So maybe in the future, when we have uh, trained our people how to operate, how to go with that, we, we to work with, the mach with, with machines, so then we, I can see we can treat many patients at a, a, a short time or period and we can reach all the people. Imagine donning a scuba suit just to get some exercise. For people recovering from serious injuries, the chance to walk out underwater is worth the extra effort. An Australian study is now examining how immersion therapy could benefit more people with brain and spinal conditions. In 2009, Jamison was injured at work. A year ago, he decided to give immersion therapy a try. This is not your ordinary workout session. It involves putting on scuba diving equipment and exercising underwater. I like getting in there with the weights and, and doing some good, good, decent, honest exercise. I've had five surgeries on the back, multiple surgeries um, all over the body, probably 40 in total. There were times where I just couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel and things were very tough. A new study of people who have brain and spinal injuries is encouraging them to exercise underwater in scuba gear. There is already a lot of anecdotal evidence that underwater immersion therapy is working. Now researchers want this new study to show how and why it's effective. By getting them underwater we think we can challenge that interaction between the brain and the body completely differently. Others aren't so sure the therapy works and point to potential safety risks. The immersion is useful and helpful for many of these clients, but not necessarily with their head underwater. Adelaide Best Determine 2, which provides immersion therapy, says that participants must be eligible before being allowed to take part in sessions. It also points out that more than 10,000 sessions have taken place without any incident. Feeling better, more energy, eating better, sleeping better. If I fall over in the water, I'm not going to fall flat on my face. I'm not going to re-aggravate an injury. The therapy technique is now being rolled out all over Australia and New Zealand. And the results of the study are expected in two to three years. Artificial intelligence is revolutionizing medicine, but to what extent can it replace humans? Let's go to Sweden, where AI has been used during a clinical trial for breast cancer screenings to improve diagnosis and cut down on radiologist workloads. But researchers say the interim results of the study completed in August show the tool is not yet ready to replace the oversight of radiologists. Artificial intelligence can be used in breast cancer screenings to improve diagnosis and cut down on radiologists' workloads, according to a Swedish clinical trial. But researchers say the interim results of the study, completed in August, show the tool is not yet ready to replace the oversight of radiologists. Lund University says about one million women are called to mammogram screenings every year in Sweden. The breast X-ray images are then typically reviewed by two radiologists, to ensure any possible cancers are spotted. It's a time-consuming task. On average, one radiologist can read about 50 screenings per hour. But can tech help cut down that workload? Researchers here in southern Sweden are assessing the effect of artificial intelligence-supported screenings. 
It's the first randomized trial comparing the two methods of diagnosis. So first we, we read the screening examination without AI and then we use our advantages we re, that are that we can see the whole image, we can compare with priors, we see the clinical context and we, we do what you usually do. And then when we're ready, we put on the AI tool and then we can see the markings in the image. The interim results of the study were published in the medical journal Lancet Oncology earlier this month, but research is ongoing. In the trial, which included over 80,000 women, researchers used AI software to identify screenings with a high risk of breast cancer. These then underwent traditional double readings of radiologists. But the remaining examinations classified as low risk were read by just one radiologist. Doctors used AI software as a kind of detection support, which highlighted suspicious findings for further investigation. Here, AI has marked a small finding in the image, and it forces us to check this. And when we take off the CAD mark, we can see here that it's a small speculations here. So this is the recall, and we did a 3D mammography and then it emphasizes this speculated tumor here. After we read the screening exam, we put on the AI, so we just press on a button here, and then you can see here that AI has marked a finding here on the image, and it gives a regional score, uh, an 81, it's a high score, and then we take off the CAD mark and we analyze this here, and we can see, well, actually here, it's a subtle speculated mass that is partly covered by dense tissue. And uh, this woman was recalled, and uh, after we did an assessment, we found a 5 millimeter invasive cancer. But I think this uh, illustrates uh, well uh, the possibilities with using AI in the screen reading. The trial results found AI-supported mammography screening resulted in a similar cancer detection rate compared with standard double readings. At also almost half doctors' workloads, screen reading was reduced by about 44%. Lang says such time saving could be vital, particularly in poor staffed medical settings. I think it is exciting because we are lacking physicians all over, and especially breast radiologists, we are lacking, and now we have a valuable tool to reduce the workload. And even as it, it was not my goal, and I didn't know if we would end there, but it, as it turns out, it has been even an improvement to the quality to put in AI. In low- and middle-income countries, there's a, a huge lack of, uh, of doctors. So these algorithms trained on large data can, of course, make a really big difference in, in this area where there, there are no experts. Lower resource settings, that, that, that would... Uh, that, that has a huge potential. The Swedish researchers say the next step is to investigate what cancer types were detected with and without AI support. 100,000 women have now been enrolled on the trial. Did you know that overuse of screens can have a multitude of long-term detrimental effects on eye health? Experts say when using digital devices like tablets, smartphones, and PCs, you can experience symptoms known as digital eye strain or computer vision syndrome. Some potential long-term effects include eye fatigue and strain, headaches, disruption of sleep patterns, and an increased risk of myopia, nearsightedness progression, especially during childhood and adolescence. Experts' recommendations to address the issue include the 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, take a 20-second break and focus on something at least 20 feet away to give your eyes a chance to relax. Ensure proper lighting to reduce glare and avoid straining your eyes. Reduce screen brightness and adjust color temperature settings to minimize blue light exposure. Finally, schedule regular eye exams to monitor your eye health and address any potential issues. That's our show for today. For more health news, wellness tips, and medical breakthroughs, stay connected to Voice of America at voaafrica.com. You can follow me on X at Linoch Mudu. Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day.